Well, welcome to IMARC 2016. As we speak, I'm talking to you from Beijing. The mining sector has been fundamental in Australia's relationship with China, Japan, Korea. Only yesterday, I was uh, with POSCO Steel in Pohang on the east coast of South Korea. 70% of their raw materials for the iron ore construction process which goes into the iron, which goes into the steel, comes from Australian raw materials. The people in this room today are the ones who have helped build the past and the current and will contribute to help build Australia's future prosperity. So I want to thank you. I want to acknowledge you, but I want to give you a sense of government policy as it affects both our domestic guests today and our international visitors. There are three big things. One, at the national level, uh, we have an economy which is the only continuously growing OECD co economy over the course of the last quarter century. That hasn't come about by accident. It's a combination of national policy, state policy, and in particular, the enterprise of the people in this room. Our big things going forwards to give this and other sectors the best chance to grow are firstly, to make sure that the national budget is brought back to surplus as quickly as possible. That in turn opens up the possibility of working towards our commitment to achieve a 25% internationally competitive enterprise tax rate. At the same time, we're doing work right now to pass through the Senate reforms uh, for the building and construction sector, which in turn will encourage building by decreasing costs, which in turn encourages demand for Australian resources. And then we're working on additional free trade agreements. I'm here in China. But beyond China and Japan and Korea, what I want to see and what we want to see as a government is more trade uh, through free trade arrangements with Indonesia, India, the Middle East, Europe and the UK. That's the agenda going forwards. The second thing is about uh, the microeconomic reforms. And this is where we have the growth centres and uh, METS is such a fantastic organisation helping to drive not just this conference, but the mining equipment and technology sector. $2.8 billion of investment in R&D came out of the mining sector in the most recent year for which we have financial results. That's better than one in seven dollars spent in R&D in Australia. So I want to thank you and acknowledge you for that. But that's about making not just our mining the most competitive, in the world about our mining equipment and technology sector. Uh, whether it's assisting um, with automated uh, vehicles, whether it's work in terms of uh, the efficiency of transportation, um, whether it's new chemical processes, uh, those in this room are contributing to that process. Over 6,000 patents in uh, mining and related R&D have come through from the, the work of those in this room. So the processes of the growth centres, coupled with the entrepreneurs program, coupled with what we're doing in relation to uh, the cooperative research centres, are all helping to drive the creativity and the efficiency of the Australian mining sector. Innovation isn't just for new firms, although it certainly is critical there. It's showing its true self in our existing firms Innovation is the only way that our manufacturing and our mining can prosper. So it's not a threat to jobs, it's the agent of job security and new job creation and new investment. I've seen that around the world and I can see that where it's working in Australia. That brings me to the last thing and that's the future of innovation in this country. Right now, we're working through the first wave of the innovation and science agenda, the Prime Minister's deep, strong personal vision about capital formation and assisting with, uh, with startups, about attracting talent and also about investment in the big science, which is the foundational platform for future innovation. The second wave in 2017 and the third wave in 2018 are under development. 
the second wave is all about additional support for private investment in Australian innovation and additional support for critical science infrastructure. And in 2018, and we're already on, uh, on the way now, it's about a national business simplification initiative to make sure that wherever possible, your work is done with one entry into the three levels of government. I can't think of a more important way of making your life easier to do your job. And at the same time, it's about collaboration with universities through a national universities precinct plan and approach. That's how we grow the country. That's how we work together. We're not the ones that, the, that create the jobs. You're the ones that create the jobs. And our job is to make it easier for you to do just that. I want to thank you, congratulate you, welcome you, and wish you all the best for iMark 2016.